Morning everybody, it's Phil Beckwith, the professional painter and decorator. Still on, I know it's taking ages, but when you're only working weekends and nights, I'm still on the flat renovation project. Now, you've seen in the playlist, I've got quite a few videos now on what I've done on this flat. And now we're coming into the main, I'll spin you around, show you the kitchen still. Um, we're in the living room, stroke dining room, stroke open plan kitchen area. Now, you've probably seen on the previous video, or you might, I don't know, the kitchen's been removed. I'll just show you. I've got the plaster in, which is my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law, Dan, is ace. He's cracking. I mean, like an egg, but you know what I mean. He's a good lad, and he's a plasterer, and he's a drywaller, dry liner. Very handy to have somebody in the um, family that's in the trade. Because, you know when I did all that stripping off of... Yeah, I know. I took all the tiles off and um, a load of plaster came off with it. So Dan's been up yesterday and he's coming in tomorrow on a Sunday um, to get some boarding put onto there and start skimming me out. So I'm in on a Saturday morning. Do you know I'm on my seventh week well, seventh weekend of working on this flat. I've not been counting, but Mrs. B has been counting. She's done seven lots of kids swimming on a Saturday morning. She's done five lots of winter training for cricket because I'll say seven, but five because they've not been on for the last two weeks because winter training's finished and now they're on to summer training. I know, yeah, so it's not an excuse to be away from the kids, far from it. It's got to be done. Right, let's talk about this. I've shown you roughly what these rooms are like and you know my process, each room's about the same if you watch that playlist. I'm cleaning down all the walls, scraping, raking out, anything that's not wanting to be there. Noggins, noggins, bits of skin, bits of roller, yeah, you know what I mean. The hairs off rollers, you know, with the view sheepskin long power rollers, it can sometimes stick on the ceilings and surfaces. So I've been going round, ceiling and walls, going over with the Merkel Arros. You know what my thoughts are on that. It's a great bit of kit, but for a thousand pound just for the Laros, add a few hundred quid for the vacuum, oh, it's a lot of money, isn't it? It's a lot of money, but time is money, save your lungs, yeah. It makes, makes, life e makes life easier. But what I've done, I'm, I've gone over all this, I've raked out any of the cracks, any of the nail heads that have popped, nail punch, knocked them back in with a hammer. I'm ready for filling up on those um, in the next hour or so, hopefully after I've done this video. And what I've done, anywhere that I've scraped off, and this is what the video is about, because you've seen the thumbnail at the start, what I've done, wherever I've scraped some paint off and it's took me back down to the bare plaster because obviously it's been contract matte. The previous decorators that did it first time around when it was a new build, just bang it on, don't they? Where we've got matte edges, and I mean matte edges where, well, you can probably just see on these, where paint comes away and it leaves you a little bit of a, a paint edge. I've gone round anything with peel stop. Now, I don't want to talk about peel stop, but I'll just briefly give you a lowdown on it. Peel stops a bit like a stabilizing solution because you can use it outside. You can also use it inside. So let's talk about the outside properties. It's like a stabilizing solution. Um, chalky, dry surfaces, you put this on and it seals it. Now when you come to the inside, if you've got matte edges raked out and you've got, I'll say problem walls loosely, where you've got flaking paint, this will glue down that paint edge to stop it still shelling off. If you've got slight crazing or cracks in a surface, you could put this peel stop on and it glues that down as well. If in doubt, read the back because it'll cover everything. It's water washable. If you're a DIY, a semi-pro, amateur professional and you've not used this, or a professional, if you've not used this, please read up on it and get some. Even if you just have a litre can in your van or on your shelf, shelf at home. It's good to have, and I know it's expensive, I know it's expensive, but it does what it says on the can, and I'm just gonna read it to you. 
I'm going to read it to you. I like reading. Totally dyslexic, but I like reading. Right, clear binding primer. Excellent. Well, we like clear stuff. Um, seals down cracks and crazing. Glues down old paint edges. That's what I was trying to explain. And binds chalky substrates. So this is why you can use it outside. If you've got a little bit of effervescence outside, dry, a friable surface, powdery, you can use that. Right, enough about that. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about guards. I want to talk about guards. Guards. This is brilliant. First things first, this is not PVA. PVA is not guards. If you don't know about PVA and the problems the decorator has with PVA, please watch that video. I'm shouting at you. Please do not use thin down PVA for anything on bare plaster surfaces or anything that's coming into contact with paint, wallpaper. I'll say wallpaper because if you've watched that video there where I do wallpaper in of a ceiling, it's only lining. Somebody had used PVA. Just look at the first few pictures. I'm not talking about PVA. PVA should not be used anywhere near a decorator. PVA is used by builders and plasterers, not decorators. <sighs> I'm in mode. Talking about guards. Guards is brilliant. Now, the reason I'm using this today, I don't know if you've seen on the previous videos where we've done the flat renovation. This section of wall actually had wallpaper on it. Now, I've stripped that last weekend and I stripped it. It was a non-woven. If you don't know what non-woven is, it's where the fibres of the um, wallpaper are interlocked. It's called a non-woven paper, which you'll probably know it as a paste the wall wallpaper. So you paste the wall, apply it. A little bit like wall rock. We're not talking about wallpaper now, we're talking about what I've done. I've stripped it, I stripped the face off, just got a putty knife or a scraper, got the face off, it pulled off in sheets. Any of the slight backing that was left on, I will call it the residue backing of the paper that didn't come off straight away dry. I got some hot soapy water and I know you're screaming at me because if you follow these videos, I don't have any water on this job and I've had to bring water with me. <sighs> yeah, big canisters of water. I have got a kettle and there was some washing up liquid um, left. So what I did, I got some hot soapy water. I soaked in that back wall and over that other side, you can probably see there, let it sit, stand with the soapy water. Use soap, fairy liquid, other brands are available because the soap on it makes the water cling to the surface. Also, it's a degreaser, it cleans the surface down as well. But don't be using, I don't know, I've heard people say about um, fabric softener. Yeah, it might smell nice, but you want to put fabric softener onto a surface. You want to clean it. You don't want to be putting something on that's going to be a problem to you. So all you need is soapy washing up liquid. Make it foam up and that will stick to the surface, makes the water cling to those backing bits of lining paper, wallpaper, anything that's still on. Come back to it and then it scrapes off dead easy. I've done all that, I've raked out the cracks and as I said any cracks that you can see just across the top I have put some of the peel stop on ready for um, filling up later. But over this surface I won't be lining it. I'm going to do what a lot of people do because I'm trying to do things like you do it and dancing, my head's bobbing up and down. Um, normally I could probably line it, the kitchen's going in from about there. So what I'm going to do is clean down, I've used the mercury and sanded it. I'll be going over that with guards and you're going to say why are you using guards? My fear is if I don't put something over it to seal it, and we're using guards for a reason. If there's any paste still left on that surface, and this goes for any wallpaper that you've stripped off um, a wall, there's a chance that impregnated into that wall surface or on the sitting on the surface, if it's been previously painted, there could be paste. And if you paint over that, give it time, that paste will soak the moisture of the, the paint, the emulsion, soak into it with a bit of heat in the room and time it starts flaking and cracking. It'll look like um, crocodile skin starting to come away from the surface. And that's a big, I'll say amateurs, DIYers that just strip wallpaper and then dry it all off and then paint a surface. You go in as a professional, you sometimes see it and you can tell that they've not cleaned that surface down properly. Now I know, and I've done it because I've been at college, you know I've been to college. I've told you how many times I was saying I've been to college. 
um, we used to clean down. When we had these booths, we had the, like a, a section of a room. It had a window in it, a door, we had ceilings, ceiling centres, internals, externals, and you had that as your project over a season, over a, over a half year and that would be your room you'd be using. Now you used to do your lining and your wallpapering and strip it. More than likely it had had an, egg, an oil eggshell on the surface um, because somebody's painted the walls. But what we used to do is, we used to learn to clean and wash down a wall correctly. And it used to be hot soapy water to get the paste off, finished off with warm water again, a bit of sandpaper, wet and dry if you're going over um, um, an oil an oil based finish like an eggshell you used to sand it down dry it all off and that was in effect good to go for us to be doing painting over the top now sometimes we used to be using oil based paints um, because back 30 odd years ago we were using oil based paints and emulsion so you'd emulsion it but we've moved on from that now sometimes people don't wash down properly and yeah, you can reap the rewards later, can't you? But what I'm going to do, I'm going on, aren't I? I want to tell you about guards. I'll be coating that surface up with guards. It's been sanded with the Merca. I've got it all down. I'm happy that what I've raked out, ready for filling, is good to go. But before I do the filling, I want to seal that wall. Now, I'll read the can again. Getting close with friends. Um, it's high performance sealer. The next one I'm going to say is the difference between PVA and this. Alkali surface primer. It's an alkaline surface primer because this is alkali resistant. PVA is not an alkali resistant product. That's why when it sits on bare new plaster, PVA over a period of time, it gets affected by the alkali in the surface and it starts pushing that even though you've thinned it down, pushing that PVA off the surface. And that's why you've seen in that video, you can peel it away when it's sitting on that surface. Now with this, this is alkaline surface primer. You can go over bare plaster with guards. That's why we use it. There are other products out there. And I know there's somebody looking at me saying, Phil, I've told you about that Beeline um, wall primer. I know that, and I am gonna be trying that at some stage, but this, this, for the person who doesn't know much about substrates and surfaces, is your get out of jail product. It's for all porous surfaces. It seals damaged drywall. Now, drywall, we know drywall in the UK, plasterboard. You know where the surfaces of the plasterboard have probably come away? You probably see it there. You can go over it and it will seal down those surfaces. If you've got dry, emulsions, contract emulsions that builders have used when they've, oh, we're in one aren't we, um, originally. If you've got surfaces like that, that you're a little bit suspect, it's dry and powdery, use this, put this over it. This will bind the surface, make it, and I'll read it what it just says on the back, because where it says about builders, builders flat paint, well, flat paint as in not shiny, not in a flat, I'm in a flat. Penetrates chalky, builders flat paint and binds it to the wall, providing water resistant protection from paint, wall covering and textured finishes. So that is a good sealer to put on a surface if you're going to be working over it. The downside is this isn't a product you'll use outside. This is your product outside. This is your inside product. Another good use of this, if you know what efflorescence is, if you've got the white salty residue from a damp brick coming through into um, a room, inside we're talking about, efflorescence, bit of damp, dust it off, scrape it down, don't wash it because you don't want to put moisture, water back into the surface. If you've got a festering wall, use this. This will bind it. Then you can get your filler, skim out those uneven surfaces. And then if you like, you can just spot prime with the guards over that ready, over the filler, ready for when you're actually doing your wallpapering or painting. Now, as I said, I'm not papering with this. I'm just gonna be painting it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get this coated out. I'm not gonna show you because it's just painting, it's just clear. I'm gonna get this all Coated up with guards, once it's dry and it doesn't take long, within an hour or so, 
I think it says uh, dry, well, refinish coat in three hours, dries in 30 minutes. Once it's dry, I will be getting some filler in these holes, get them all filled up. Once they're dry, like sand over, because I'll try and fill them quite neatly. And then where any filler is, I will just spot prime back with the guards. Does that make sense? Any questions, ask below. Um, another time I'll use this, if I was wallpapering, and you've got surfaces that are very uneven in colour, well it doesn't matter about the colour, but very uneven in colour because they've been patched up with, I don't know, chopping out electrician's bin, there's been some chasing out, it's been re-plastered, and it's an uneven, temperamental surface. Instead of just thinning down your tub paste, always use your, your paste that you're using for your lining and your finished paper. You can thin it down and use that as your size to even out the porosity of the surface, you can use your paste. If you're not gonna be using paste because you've got a bit of a dodgy surface, not a dodgy tummy, dodgy surface, you can also size your wall areas ready for lining and wallpapering with guards. It's expensive size, but it does what it needs to do. If you've got a problem surface, you can use this. Now I'm gonna to say to you, give some comments. What do you use? I don't want a 30 minute video on this. We're gonna keep it half of that. But this is what I'm doing on this section of the project on the flat. These walls that have had wallpaper on, I'm not gonna be lining them. I'm actually putting guards on and bringing it forward like that. That will give me the surface that I can paint on in, an, in a few weeks time. And I can wash my rush out in water. Well, I could do if I've got a sink up here, but I can't. Um, thanks for listening. Any questions, down below. Like and share, comment, the usual.